Since 2004, every October has been set aside as something called National Cybersecurity Month. It's a public service campaign that's emulated by other countries around the world. And it's usually, well, I'll tell you, it's actually kind of boring. But this year, protecting yourself on the internet has taken a far more urgent tone. They're dealing with a big headache, and that is the WikiLeaks it's email. It's unclear why Equifax today. may have left its computers unprotected for months. Deleting her emails, how she came to that decision, how it was... Estimated. On Thursday, the Federal Trade Commission took the unusual step of confirming it is investigating. These are just a few of the high-profile computer security stories that just rocked the United States this past year. And you're going to hear it over and over. Create strong passwords, install your security software. But that's not enough. If you do anything online, you really need to protect yourself. You would never leave your home unlocked, but the chances that your private information will be stolen online, well, it's far greater than your home being robbed, actually. You need the online equivalent of a home security system. So today, we're going to talk about the tools that you need to protect yourself and your family. And I promise it's not going to be boring. I'm America's Digital Pro, Kim Commando, and thanks for joining me for this Commando On Demand podcast. And I just love doing these podcasts because I can delve deep into a particular topic. And if you're not already getting my podcast delivered to your phone, your computer, your tablet, automatically, you really should. It's super simple. On Apple iTunes, just hit subscribe, or on Google Play, the same button, subscribe. And this way, you automatically get my podcast delivered to your favorite device. The Commando On Demand podcast is brought to you in part by iDrive. Protect all your data on all your PCs, Macs, servers, and mobile devices to one iDrive account. Switch to iDrive today from any competing service and get 90% off your first year. iDrive.com, promo code KIM. There are dozens of different ways your private information can be hacked online. But for the next few minutes, let's review and let's talk about the top three online threats. Joining me to talk about cybersecurity is Robert Siciliano. Robert is a security analyst and an ID protection expert. He's written a lot of books, including 99 Things You Wish You Knew Before Your Identity Was Stolen. But before we start on our list of the top three online threats, let's get started with just a general question. There's been a lot of new coverage this year about online security. It seems like beginning this year alone, online security stories and data breach stories were suddenly covered by the likes of ABC Nightly News and ABC World News Tonight. And a question that I've been getting asked myself is, do you think the threat is actually being overblown by the media? Here in 2017, that things are in fact getting worse. While most corporations and government agencies recognize the need to implement more security, there were 4 billion records compromised in 2016, and already in 2017, they're saying 1.9 billion That number is astonishing. Almost everyone in some form of a civilized society has had their information compromised in some way, shape, or form, whether that's name, address, phone number, home phone, mobile phone, and then, of course, email address, and then bank account numbers, and here in the U.S., social security numbers. It's actually quite frightening. One of the biggest online threats is password hacks, and it's number one on our list. It's become my personal mission to stop every American from using easy password for things like their email, their Facebook account, or online banking. But it's really hard to get that message through to folks. One person who faced the disaster of having a password stolen was technology reporter Matt Honan. Matt was a senior editor for Wired magazine a few years ago when the unthinkable happened. Uh, It was Friday evening and I was uh, expecting a phone call. I noticed my phone turned off. Uh, I went to plug it in, and, and when I did that, uh, the, the startup screen you get when you first buy a new iPhone came up. I tried entering my password, uh, and said my password was wrong. I went and looked at my computer. What happened, I was sitting there watching while my iPad and my iPhone and my computer uh, hard drives were all wiped remotely all at the same time. At that point, I basically kind of freaked out. The hackers gained access to Matt's Amazon.com account because his Amazon account was connected to his Apple account, which was then connected to his Google account, In just a few hours, his whole digital life was compromised. And being a good journalist that he is, Matt reached out to the hackers and made them a promise. You know, if you explain how this is going to happen, I'm not going to take any steps to prosecute you. um, Because I really wanted to understand how and what the extent uh, of of this problem was. And once it kind of became apparent that it was a uh, a really widespread problem, that it wasn't a security issue that would just affect me, I thought it was very important to know how it was done and how you could, you know, how, how you could stop it. 
Matt told CNN he lost an entire year of photos of his new baby, along with a ton of other personal material. He learned that Amazon only required a few pieces of personal information to reset a password. Once the hackers got access to that account, the rest, well, they just felt like dominoes. Matt's story in Wired forced Amazon and Google to change the way that you actually can reset your password. This story underlines just how important it is to protect your password. Using a password manager that generates randomized passwords and stores them for you is a good way to do that. You can use a password manager like LastPass or KeePass. As for me, I don't use one. I have come up with a way, yes, to remember every single one of my passwords, and they're different for every single account that I have. But I also took another step, and I encourage you to do the same, is what you want to do is use something called two-step authentication or two-factor authentication. The first step, you enter your username and your password. Then you get a text with a one-time use code. The second step is entering that code on the site in order to gain access. The whole idea behind it is that even if a hacker has your login information, they would still need your phone to get that special code. Almost all the big online companies and banks offer two-step passwords. And when you're done listening to this podcast, go into your Gmail and Facebook settings, as well as your other accounts, and just turn them on. A whole lot of hacking of individual accounts could be stopped if two-step authentication was actually mandatory for everyone's profiles. So your password is first, and in many cases, it's the last line of defense. But having your password stolen isn't the only online risk. Second on my list, phishing scams. These are the type of scams that steal millions of dollars from people and companies around the world. You're probably familiar with the more common phishing techniques. It's pretty old by now, the Nigerian print scam. You know the one. You get an email in your inbox, supposedly from this multi-millionaire, a billionaire overseas, but they have selected you out of all the millions of people on the internet to help them get their money out of the country. And then all you have to do is send them your bank account information. You know, this drill goes on and on. Now, most people today are smart enough to recognize that scam for what it is. But phishing scams have become far more sophisticated. Stay right where you are, because when we come right back, I'm going to tell you a couple of fun facts I bet you never heard before. Home isn't just a place. It's a feeling that you're safe to enjoy the things that matter most. ADT lets you take that feeling with you, whether you're at home, your business, or online. We help keep you safe with security systems, home automation, alarms, and surveillance. So you can feel at home wherever you are. Go to ADT.com to get that feeling for less than a dollar a day. ADT. Home. Safe home. Earlier this year, a Canadian university received a letter from their building contractor. Clark Builders was in the process of completing a $100 million facility for McEwen University. Paul Verhessen is the CEO of Clark Builders. The fraudsters... They obviously went onto our website, created a document, a letter, that looked an awful lot like a letter that we would have produced. They forged my CFO's signature and they sent that letter requesting McEwen to change the routing on our electronic banking to a different account. The new bank account belonged to the scammers and they were able to steal, get this, $11.8 million. Gosh, that's a staggering amount of money, Paul. This one was particularly a major concern just because of the magnitude of the dollars and a really good client of ours being taken advantage of using our brand and our name. And so, yeah, I was I was mad. Obviously, I was embarrassed that that our brand got got uh, got used fraudulently, and that a, a really good client of ours was was being taken advantage of. After the police were notified, the university was able to freeze the account where the stolen money was sent. They were able to recover most of it. But if they hadn't acted so quickly, there would have been no way to get the money back. A phishing scam usually comes in the form of an email. You've seen them. It looks like a message has been sent from your bank or from Facebook or from your email provider, your boss, complete with authentic logos and pictures and disclaimers at the bottom. There are, you know, hundreds of ruses that come across via email, essentially phishing emails where they are trying to get the, the potential victim to either A, uh, click a link, which would bring them to a spoofed website where you might enter your credentials. Maybe clicking that link might download a virus onto your machine, compromising your device. Paul, I'm sure you learned a few lessons from this whole experience. What are the top ones? If there's ever a change of any sort, 
whether it's banking information or people get a verbal comp- confirmation. Somebody should have picked up the phone and phoned somebody at Clark Builders and said, hey, what's going on? Why are you changing your bank account? That simple phone call would have eliminated all the, all the challenges. That's right, Paul. If someone is asking you to provide or change your banking information, you have to be certain that they are who they actually say they are. Don't just blindly click a link sent to your email. The real Internal Revenue Service or the real banks, they're not going to request information by email. When in doubt, pick up the phone. I know it's old school. Call the bank. Talk to a real person so you can verify their identity. There's also another risk to clicking on a link that you get sent in an email. And that brings me to the third biggest online threat on my list. It's ransomware. Ransomware has become big business. It's expected to cost individuals and businesses $1 billion this year. As a matter of fact, ransomware do-it-yourself kits on the dark web have just exploded. Sales have increased on the dark web. Are you sitting down? Are you ready for it? 2,500% over the last year. Ransomware is a bit like someone changing locks on your house and then demanding payment for providing you with the new key. There have been hundreds of stories this year about universities, hospitals, businesses who have had their critical files encrypted and then held hostage. In June of this year, a South Korean web company had to pay $1 million to the hackers to get their information back. The key to ignoring potential ransomware is to simultaneously protect your data. And that can mean using both a cloud service, like iDrive, they're a sponsor of the Kim Commando Show, I use them and I recommend them, as well as some external hard drives. So Robert, I have a sinking feeling that things are getting much worse than ever before. That is the, the it's getting worse scenario. You know, you often hear that, you know, criminal hackers are getting more sophisticated, they're getting more organized. It's somewhat cliche, but it's that it's definitely true. They have the most intense cyber weapons at their disposal today. Uh, and unfortunately, it is only going to get worse. The worrying thing is that some governments and corporations don't seem to be reacting quickly enough to these threats. In a recent episode of Commando On Demand podcast, we discussed the ongoing Equifax scandal. The way that that company exposed 145 million Americans' credit cards, their home addresses, their social security numbers, was truly astounding. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, And it doesn't surprise me because, you know, all those that are responsible for for the securing our infrastructure, they themselves are just flawed, fallible human beings. And that's ultimately what the people who are responsible for securing us are, is just fallible, flawed humans. When I've spoken about the hack with my listeners on radio affiliate stations, there's always some real confusion about how a big institutional hack, like the Equifax breach, could affect their day-to-day lives. I've always believed that, especially in American culture, you know, we don't want to think these things can happen to us. We think that they only happen to other people. We function under various myths, society and societal cultural beliefs that to be secure, that you must be paranoid. And nothing could be further from the truth. And that's precisely why I wanted to include big institutional hacks on our list of the top three online threats. The problem with this one is that there's not much an individual can do to protect themselves from the incompetence of a big corporation like Equifax. Yeah, and and, and we call that fatalism, right? And there is a tremendous amount of fatalism when it comes to uh, personal security, information security, and I just think that's a cop-out. That's an interesting take, Robert. And thanks so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, the threat of having your life turned upside down by a hack is pretty real. But you don't have to be helpless. There are simple ways to protect yourself and your family. So why don't you honor Cybersecurity Month right now by heading over to commando.com where we have the step-by-step instructions for you to actually implement things and get it done like two-factor authentication and getting security software on your systems. This problem is going to get much worse before it gets better, but you can protect yourself. You don't have to sit back and be a victim. After all, remember, now that you have the knowledge, you have the power. Thanks so much for joining me for this podcast. And if you like this podcast, and if I've taught you just one thing over the years, you owe me a favor. Head over to iTunes or Google Play and give us a five-star rating and a terrific written review because this way more people will find our podcasts. And you can watch my show, you can listen to my show, and you can find my show on a station near you by heading over to the official homepage of the Kim Commando Show. That's commando.com. 
K-O-M-A-N-D-O.com. And hey, by the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you get the free Commando.com app. It's available for free on iTunes. And for all your Android devices, you can find it on Google Play or your favorite podcast player. Because not only can you get this podcast delivered automatically, but also our other wildly, insanely popular podcast called Tech News This Week. A major credit bureau recently announced a breach that may have exposed the personal information of 143 million people. You need to take steps to get identity theft protection. Good thing there's LifeLock. LifeLock uses proprietary technology to detect and alert you if your personal information is being used. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But if there's a problem, LifeLock's identity restoration specialists will work to fix it. Go to LifeLock.com to get 10% off when you enter promo code KIM. That's promo code KIM for 10% off.